Good afternoon, my name is Scott Rutherford, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap and look ahead. So we came in today not knowing really what to expect. Last week, Fed minutes were hawkish, oil came in a little bit, banks strengthened, you know, you had a little bit of a weakness to start the week, and then we had that reversal Thursday into Friday. So the question is, what's next? Well, we didn't get that many answers today. What happened was probably one of the most narrow ranges, ranges of the year. So what does that do? It punishes people that overtrade. I actually overtraded a little bit today. I got to raise my hand. And um, kind of maybe sets the table for something <laughs> if you take out that narrow range bar. So uh, there was definitely a lot of divergences across the board among sectors, within sectors. Um, some small things to do, but today was one of those days where, you know, hopefully you did a lot less. Let's just go right to the charts. If you go right here to the SPX, here is the old highs, you know, around 2100. This was another pivot where we put in uh, our high back in, um, you know, April, right before most of the, you know, the, neg you know, the negative tech earnings started coming in. And this is where we are as of now. So um, we haven't really pulled in that much. So the question is, you know, what's next? From this double bottom low of 1812, where we held higher right here and broke intermediate resistance there and, and then followed the 1821 day all the way up until here, you know, all we've done is really pull back about, you know, 50 handles. So the question, was that it or do we get more? And uh, if you take a closer look today to the action, so let's just, you know, so we could break it down a little bit in here. All we had today is um, really another lower high. You know, the, 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 the problem is, is that a lot of people own the, the market here already and a lot of people are short the market here already. So there's no rush to cover or buy more and no rush to press short more for lower prices. It looked like the bears had their, their chance last week. Remember, we took out 2034, went as low as 2025. Here was your red dog reversal. If you happen to have been short here and you added here, um, you got paid if you held on into there. And then if you bought, you know, the, the reversal here, um, I know I did that from Thursday into Friday. I got out. Now, you know, question is, here is your narrow range bar. So what, what we want to do is you want to write down 2049 and you want to write down 2055. <laughs> I doubt, I, I guess I, I have, I, I, you know, I <laughs> imagine we get a more, a bigger narrow range bar tomorrow or a smaller one even, and it goes like this. I can't even draw it. It would be so small. <laughs> but typically what happens is, you know, you either get a move above this to go to the upside or below. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, we have to deal with the overnight futures and the overnight market. But as of now, you know, this, this head and shoulders top still looks in somewhat control. Um, but, you know, at this point, you're not getting much follow through either way. You still have, you know, this left shoulder. You still don't have a blowout of this right shoulder. What, what do I mean by a blowout of the right shoulder? I mean finally like a potent move like this that gets above this descending channel and holds above it with you know with lots of participation so we'll see what happens you know it's only monday janet doesn't speak till friday you have memorial day at the end of the week and you also have most of the fed and brexit and all that stuff not for another two weeks so we'll see what happens whatever you do you know just don't overtrade it um, this morning we talked about whether we can get a push in the bios above 265 for those of you who focused on the bios there was a small trade there better than the spiders. Um, what do I mean by a small trade? A small trade is it just pushed above this 265, went as high as almost 268, and there was a little bit of a trade there. Here is your inside um, range, broke a little bit above it, not saying much. It's still a broken sector, it's well below the 200 day and it's hard to trust, but there was something to do there. Uh, on the weaker side, you had you know, Facebook and Amazon. It's interesting what's going on here. Why is Facebook and Amazon out of play, especially Facebook? Facebook almost looks like it's going to trade into its earnings gap tomorrow. It might. It might do it overnight. Who knows? Um, you know, I was thinking about maybe being shorted overnight, but I'm like, you know what? Um, I've been, had way too much success being long it. And, um, but at this point, I'd be very careful. I don't think any momentum longs would be going home long this, considering the relative weakness we just saw today where you had a small bounce back contained by the 8-day. Now the 8-day is rolling down, closing on the lows. It's vulnerable. There's a huge gap here. So the best trade would be open up 10, 15 cents tomorrow, futures get hit, and then maybe we get a quick short underneath um, this pivot here, which is uh, 1588, and you get like a flash down, and then maybe you, know, you get a, a, a buy into the gap. But as of now, I would not be long this overnight the way it's been acting.
Okay, some people might even be shorted, but again, it's hard to be short Facebook considering how strong the stock's been for quite some time. But at this point, very, very careful. Amazon also closed below um, Friday's low. Okay, so what does that mean? You know, here is your descending channel. Here is Friday's low. It closed below it, went red fast. So just, you know, a small signal that, you know, you don't want to be in it if you're looking as a momentum trader to look for momentum. <laughs> Not yet. You had your small little buy here, your red dog reversal around this little pivot. If that's what you do, it held here, okay? Gave you a pivot around this low, which was uh, um, 693, went as high as uh, 707. So what is that, 14 points in a few sessions, and now it turned down. And uh, you know, unless, you're, unless you bought it here and you have your stop there, okay. But for the day, the day, there was a little relative weakness. So we'll see, you know, what that means you know, moving forward. It's still flagging above um, this prior area and still looks best in breed, but short term, it's like the rest of the things, you know, does it pull back to the 21 day and shake the tree? I don't know. Or does it hold here? But for today, if you're looking for something to take home long, this would not be something that, you know, I would think um, just, for, just for today. Um, some things that do look strong, CRM, you know, had that nice earnings gap. I don't know if they let anything break out, but you know, if you go here, you'll see that um, here is the gap. I am long small. You know, I was figuring if we were in a decent tape, maybe this takes out the spot. You have a big gap here. Um, so this, to me, looks like best in breed. Didn't quite do what NVIDIA did, obviously. NVIDIA, you know, had its big earnings gap and in no time at all took it out, and now it's extended. I would not be buying NVIDIA here, but it doesn't mean it's a short. This, too, has a narrow range bar, so maybe if it were to get below um, today's low tomorrow, there's a, a bit of a pullback but we shall see. This has been an, a stealth winner. Um, what else? Um, you know, the banks, I talked about the banks, they have to hold certain levels to stay interesting. Well, they, they did for now. Um, JP Morgan, you know, still um, an inside move. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Can this continue to go sideways and flag for a potential move above this to help the bulls? Still looks okay. You know, three inside days, another day or so, and people start losing interest, kind of like what happened here. You know, it looked like it had a, a nice, you know, up move, consolidation, could have went and failed. Well, this igniting move from, you know, last week, um, you know, I'm small, I mean, a small feeler just to see whether or not I, I could just, I want to keep watching it just in case it, it picks up. Um, I guess let's see what happened with Citigroup. Citigroup, you could say the same type of thing. You know, still holding the majority of that wide range bar. And if the market wanted something to gravitate towards, maybe this would be helpful, but still below the 200 day, still hard to trust. But that was one of the things, you know, can the banks, you know, have some flows and then you flip switch to switch to oil. How low would oil go? Oil itself still above 47, can't get too bearish on oil as long as it stays above 47. If you look at the USO real quick, um, all in all, uh, still hanging in there, hanging tough. Look at the size of the move that it's had, you know, from the lows here, um, still above a few different trends. It's way above that trend. And if you want to look at the accelerated trend, it's still above this. So all in all, I don't think people are going to get too worried about oil unless maybe it were to break the 21 day, which it hasn't done in a while, which is at 11 and a quarter. So still in stride, I would say. Um, the oil stocks also uh, in stride. Um, didn't pull in when oil pulled in and maybe it would be helpful for the market if when oil turned up, this takes out this spot. Um, you could draw your line here is still not in jeopardy of breaking this ascending channel, still above some of these micro, you know, the tactical moving averages, so it's hanging in there. Uh, on a different note, Tesla will be interesting tomorrow to see what happens. Um, I talked about it getting into resistance at the 200 day. Well, it got into resistance, did a red dog reversal around this, um, you know, 220.55 for those who wanted to short it. And now we'll see what happens tomorrow. You know, price is 215. What happens is, um, you know, it, it, well, that's a wrong line here. Um, Usually what happens is this, is if you break price, anyone who's still in it from that 215 secondary price probably says, oh my goodness, I can't turn this into a loss, and it gets out of the way. If it holds it, shorts who are trying to press it get squeezed, so we'll see what happens around that tomorrow. So, um, you know, at this point, very narrow range today. You definitely had some things to do, small things, tactically, on a, on a micro scale. If you could do them, if you tried to, you know, do too much, it was very, very easy to overtrade. Um, I know for me, I looked at Facebook, tried a little early, and it was horrible. Um, should have went with Netflix. Netflix from the morning note did really well. Um, we talked about the rounding bottom. We talked about whether or not it could trade above um, this resistance, which was um, right here, that 93. Well, it went through it fast, 
And um, hopefully you caught that one. You know, if you did, congratulations. As the the, the the 200 day. And lastly, Apple. You know, Apple switched gears once it reclaimed. You know that this uh, this spot right here. You know, I know a lot of us were thinking short, including me. I made some decent money shorting into that. And then boom, on this gap up when it reclaimed the eight day. That's it. You know, tactically it's 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 stronger until it gives it up. So today it came almost up to the the post earnings gap high, and we'll see what happens now. We'll see if it can go inside a little bit. For a few sessions and then maybe make an assault to fill that gap but as of now much better tactical long since this spot you know and then into this area i need a day or so so i wouldn't be chasing it now but i know guys who might have been short here and didn't cover thinking okay but what about that head and shoulders macro top you know and they're you know a little bit worried considering you know the the relative strength we've seen here over the you know over the past week we'll see if that continues for tomorrow we'll see how it handles this um 9567. So in closing, we've got a long week ahead of us before Memorial Day weekend, a long week ahead of us before Yellen speaks on Friday, a long week ahead of us before the jobs number next Friday, a long few weeks ahead of us before the Brexit scenario and the Fed. So I don't know if we're going to stay this tight and be so out of play and volume is going to be less than we had Christmas Eve. If so, just act accordingly. Don't overtrade. And um, if something starts to speed up and change, you know, we'll try and catch it, you know, all together. And if you have five things on your game plan and two of them don't work and two of them do work, it happens. Move on. We'll see. Hopefully we'll pick the right ones tomorrow, you know, or do a little bit of each of them and then wait for confirmation and then, you know, go with the ones that are they're actually working then that are not. And um, that's it. See you tomorrow morning. Have a great night.